Warren's daughter, Courtney Oakley Warren, was standing near her mom when her dad fired that first shot, and she's going to testify later today for the defense. Courtney was also a major witness, remember, for the prosecution. So let's get a look at some of the key moments from their case with her. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. The evidence in this case is going to show the following. That the defendant, Patrick Warren, Warren Sr., consciously chose to murder Kelly Warren and Jonathan Vuick. After he shoots his son, fires one round, during that time lapse, he doesn't stop. He pursues Kelly Warren. And while you were in the ambulance with uh, the defendant, did you hear him make any statements driving to the hospital? I did. What, if anything, did you hear him say? I heard him say that little Now, you, you told us about Missy. Had you ever met Missy? No. Have you ever talked to her on the phone? No. Okay. Did um, Jonathan and your mom talk about Missy? Uh, not in front of me. What was your dad's reaction to your mom moving down there with Mr. Buick? Upset. Did he ever make any threats against Mr. Buick? Yes. What would he say? He threatened to kill him multiple times. He pushed the gate open, uh, went around the driver's side, and grabbed her. Okay, where did he grab her? Uh, I grabbed her hair. Okay. And what did you do when you saw this? I stepped in, got between them, and I started throwing them on the hood of the car. Okay, when did you notice that your dad had something in his hands? Um, when my mom turned around in the house, uh, he pulled out a handgun. Did he fire it? Yes. How did you know he fired it? Um, did you see the muzzle flash? Yes. Did you hear the noise? Yes. Okay. My ears are ringing. What did your mom do? Did you notice what she did after the shot was fired? Um, she ran the house. And what did you do? I um, continued to struggle to get the gun away from him. Were you successful at getting the gun away from him? No. Did you get hit? Yes. Uh, where did you get hit? In the chest. And who told you that about Missy? My mom. Did you ever meet Missy? No. Did you ever talk to her on the phone? Yes. Okay, when did you talk to her on the phone? Um, she called me one night. Were you surprised by that? Yes. What was your dad's attitude like towards Jonathan and your mother? Mad. Did he ever make any threats? Yes. And what, what threats did he make? Wait, when he was mad, he'd say that he was going to kill that little did there come a time when you realized that your dad had a gun? Yes. How did you realize that? Whenever I saw the, when I heard and saw the fire. You saw the muzzle flash on the gun? Yes. Okay, and what did you do after you saw that? Um, I ran to the middle of the street. Okay, and what were you doing? I was screaming. Everything he said, did you learn if she existed? Do you, all of that is hearsay. And he's getting it in through his questions and limiting him to a yes or no answer. It's not relevant. It's not relevant at all. They're doing it for state of mind. And the case law is clear. How many times during, from the December of 07 until April of 08, would you hear Mr. Warren make threats towards those, those individuals? It was mainly when he would get to drinking. And what would he say? He ought to go down there and just kill him. And during those, that time period from December when she moved out until April, did Mr. Warren make threats towards Mr. Buick and Miss Kelly Warren? Yeah, occasionally he'd say, I ought to go down there and kill him. Had Mr. Warren told you that he bought a, a handgun? No, sir. Had Mr. Warren ever told you he wanted a 45 caliber handgun? He might have mentioned years before that that he liked 45s, but he never said he wanted one. So in order to extract a live round based on your training experience from a semi-automatic how do you have to manip manipulate the gun to do that? Manually manipulate it. So in order to fire that gun 10 or 11 times, you'd have to pull the trigger 10 or 11 times? Yes, that's correct. All right, criminal defense attorney Brian Claypool with us right now. Brian, thank you for being with us. Since we've strung all of these uh, sound bites together here and you hear them in that manner, did the state prove its case, first of all, in your opinion? Well, hi, Christy. Thanks for having me back. Sure. I think the state has done a pretty effective job to this point of demonstrating that uh, Mr. Uh, Warren had made prior 
threats uh, to kill both Kelly and Mr. Buick. And I think that's pivotal uh, right now in proving up the case. Uh, if you have this pattern of comments made by Mr. Warren months leading up to the shooting where he's saying, I'm going to kill him or I'm going to kill my wife, then that suggests that he's planned or premeditated the killing. So that's a very, very powerful piece of evidence that the prosecution has put on. But what the prosecution is going to have to defend now uh, when the defense puts up its case is this, whether this Missy, this alleged Missy existed or not, because that might poke a hole in the prosecution's case that this was premeditated as opposed to being in the heat of passion. Mm, okay. Well, let me ask you about his children taking the stand. I mean, um, the, they talked about their dad being, especially uh, Patrick Warren Jr., about his dad being depressed and upset and even crying. And did they do anything, do you think, to advance that whole heat of passion defense for their father? Yeah, great question. I do think that some of the, the, the testimony from the, the son and the daughter also helped the defense because it, it, it provides a window into the state of mind of Patrick Warren Sr. And it shows that here, here's a man that's basically crumbling. He's, he's crying, he's sobbing, he's upset, he's not shaving, he's having trouble working now. It's almost like he's, he's, he's a cup of coffee percolating. He's ready to brew over. And I mm -hmm. think that actually supports a heat of passion uh, defense because everything's kind of building up to this crescendo and then he just blows a gasket and he shoots and kills both these folks. So I mm -hmm. think that actually does help uh, the defense. Okay. You, you were mentioning this pattern of how he, he said previously, according to all these witnesses, that he was going to, you know, kill somebody. Haven't we all at some point said, oh, I'm going to kill him? You know, and, and we say it kind of flippantly. We don't mean it. Is there any way, though, with as many witnesses that took the stand and, and testified to him saying that, is there any way to temper those statements? But, you know, can the defense do anything to kind of dilute their meaning and, and put them off as, uh, you know, he didn't mean it, he was just talking out of anger. But in this case, he said it, and then he actually went and did it. Well, the, the important thing to note here, Christy, is that there's a difference between saying, hey, I'm going to knock somebody off, or you're having a beer, or, you know, I'm going to go kill, you know, my ex-girlfriend, uh, versus actually going out and buying a gun. Mm -hmm. Here, he bought a gun about six weeks prior to the shooting. That is a powerful piece of evidence in favor of the prosecution and against the defense. So I think that's going to hurt the defense case. But I think what the defense has to do is they have to temper that with the fact that, uh, you know, Warren is mentally becoming mentally unstable. And then this whole thing about Missy, I think, is going to be monumental in the defense mm -hmm. case because the defense has to really paint a negative picture of the two deceased uh, victims here. And that, that's, a, that's a unique kind of situation here. In other words, you've got two folks that have been killed. The defense's best argument here is, wait a minute, these two folks that were killed were not nice people either. They were scamming Mr. Warren. They created this fictional character of Missy, and that tormented Mr. Warren to a point where he shot and killed them. And then you argue, that's heat of passion. And that's interesting because Missy Norman, no one's seen her. That She's kind of the big mystery element in this whole thing. Nobody's ever seen her. The authorities can't find her. How, how imperative, though, how instrumental might a character be in a case like this, a character who, as far as we can tell, doesn't even exist? I mean, are you talking about trying to paint them as being so deceitful that this is, yeah. you know, this it, is why he did what he did? Yeah, Christy, it's, it, it, for the defense's case, this is monumental. The defense has to show that Missy did not exist. And I think they, can, they have a good shot at doing it here um, because I believe, you know, I, I really believe that these children of Patrick Warren would have spoken to Missy. They mm -hmm. would have talked to her. In fact, the son got up there and he said, I don't even know her last, last name. Last name, I, mean, I know. Are you, are you kidding me? I mean, it, it's very, very suspicious about this Missy. And it, it possibly looks like a scam because apparently, uh, you know, Kelly and John Buick were living in the same home together and or because because there was there was an argument. And again, that suggests that these two are together and that maybe possibly Kelly is making up Missy 
to try to put out a veneer or to try to, you know, distract Patrick Warren Sr. from thinking that there is an affair going on here. Now, if that if the defense is able to show that, then I think that a human element comes into this case Mm -hmm. where jurors might sit back there and say, wait a minute, I do feel a little bit sorry for Patrick Warren Sr. because he was duped. I mean, this is the ultimate where your your wife is pretending that her her mistress is having an affair, is is marrying somebody else and having somebody else's kid. I mean, th- the defense has to get the jury to somehow feel sorry for Patrick Warren Sr. That's a daunting task, but I think they can do it here if they show that Missy was just a complete scam. It's going to wow. elicit sympathy from the jury. Mm. Very interesting. Brian Claypool, thank you so much. He's sticking around with us. We're going to talk to him more in the next hour as well. Thanks, Brian. Sure. Thank you. Sure.